All right, today we're going to go through the PID tab. We're going to go through the settings, try to keep it simple, and describe what each setting does. Okay, so first up, we have the profiles. We have the PID profiles and the rate profiles. You can see you have up to six rate profiles and three PID profiles. The PID profiles essentially uh, address the PIDs here, the P, I, and D, and then you can have different settings per profile, and then you can switch between them in the OSD. Some of the settings down below also follow the PID profiles, but it's not all of them. Honestly, I wish it was a little cleaner. That would be all the settings down here would follow the PID profiles, but it's not set up that way. Rate profiles are a little simpler. That is your RC rate, RC Expo, and Super Expo. Of course, you have your P, I, and D for proportional, integral, and derivative. This is pushing your copter into a move along with feed forward. The intent is that you tune your P, I, and D based on the craft's mechanical, inertia, things of that nature, and then your feed forward acts as an extra pusher just to help you get and in, enter into moves. As you do increase feed forward, you may need to up your D gains a little bit. When you are in angle mode or horizon mode, where it's an auto level stabilizing mode, these rates up here do not apply. What you're really dealing with at that point is your angle limit. Let's just go with angle mode for simplicity. In angle mode, it will only let your quadcopter get up to 55 degrees of angle on it. Obviously, if you move this up to 65, 70 or whatever, then that will go higher. And then the amount of strength, essentially, it's almost like a rubber band. It's trying to always get back to level. That strength indicator is the 50. It's kind of an abstract number. It's not a unitized number as far as I'm aware. So you just kind of have to play with it. Uh, if you want faster, a more agile angle mode, you would increase this number maybe to 75 or even higher. It depends really what you want. It depends on the craft too, obviously, how strong the motors are, how light it is, so on and so forth. And that's what that is. So it's between the angle limit and the angle strength when you're in angle mode. You can really ignore all this up here for the rates. In horizon mode, it's kind of the same thing. You have this strength, but then you have this transition. The transition is essentially when it will leave angle mode and when you're in horizon mode and enter into rate mode so you can do a flip or roll. Uh, 75 again is somewhat of an arbitrary number so you can just play with it if you want that transition earlier you would lower this number if you want it later you would raise this number. Let's venture over here real quick so we have the throttle midpoint so this has to do with expo on the throttle so if I put expo to one here on the throttle you can see that's the max value and it will soften out your throttle input so this is zero throttle this is 100 percent throttle and then the point here is the midpoint so if i you know if maybe my hover point is down here at 25 percent throttle or more realistically about 30 percent throttle 33 percent throttle then you can kind of flatten it out here and then this has to deal with how linear it is if you have expo there or not tpa decreases your pid values above the break point so 1500 is 50%, so our ranges are between 1000 and 2000, so obviously 1500 is right in the middle. And then it will decrease the PIDs by 0.5. So if we break that down for TPA pretty simply here, this is, if we set TPA to zero, that means you, this is your uh, percentage throttle along the bottom. So zero throttle, 100% throttle, and this is your PID strength, so your PID gains up here, whatever you have here across the board. Um, this is again 0 to 100. So if this is your TPA is set to 0, you have full PIDs, uh, the full gains across the entire throttle range. Let's just say we set this to 0.5, which is the default. What that is going to do is at 50% throttle down here, once you exceed 50% throttle, it's going to linearly ramp your PIDs down to 0.5. So at 75% throttle, it's going to be decreasing your PIDs by 0.25, for example. Now there is one change here that was enacted in Betaflight 4.0. So it's really now, it's throttle D-term attenuation. The TPA only acts on D-term now by default. So it's really just decreasing your D-term linearly for whatever settings you have here. Again, the default is 0.5 
at 1500. Honestly, what I do is I raise that up to 85% throttle and then I decrease my D-term even more. Really, I want my full D-term personally through my prop wash zone, which is usually 50. You know, I'm usually at 50% to 85% throttle for when I'm in you know, pretty turbulent prop wash and tight turns and things of that nature, um, getting out of a split S, things like that. And I don't want my D-term attenuated at all at that point. Um, so above that though, you know, usually above 85% throttle, I'm just doing a full punch out and I, there's not, I'm not really doing moves at that point, so I can really dampen the D-term. If you do that, your motors will wind up even faster because it, the D-term picks up a lot of noise. But if you're attenuating that, then it's almost like a filter, but it's a zero latency filter. So something to think about. Uh, like again, the defaults are 1500. If you don't want to play with it, just leave it at the defaults. Next is the throttle limit. So this has a couple options you can scale or clip. So let's just see what that looks like. So if I set to scale and 7.5, that means I will never get to 100% throttle. Even when I move my stick all the way up, it's only going to ever get to 75% throttle. And scale means it's going to transition like this. It's going to be a linear transition to 75%. Let's get what 75% is here. And I will never get up to 100%. So if I set it to scale and 75%, that means it will transition to 75% throttle right about here and it will do it linearly across the throttle scale. Whereas if I change this down to clip, then the throttle curve is going to look more like this, where it's your normal throttle curve where it's trying it's linearly going to go up to 100% throttle like it normally would without, you know, without this set with this set to off. And once it gets up to 75% throttle on the stick, it's going to just peak and stop and just ride that all the way across at you know and just max out at 75 percent so with clip you're not really changing your feel of the throttle you're just kind of stopping at 75 percent whereas at scale you're changing your throttle curve you know it's going to flatten that down so it depends what you want do you want it scaled or clipped you know just pick whichever you want in betaflight 4.0 the d term is now dynamic so as you take off on your quadcopter, these are really not your D gains. This 35 and 38 at the default, you're really your D gains are down to 20 and 22 by default. When you enter into a sharp move or start to see prop wash, then the D term will basically go up to 35 or 38. These are kind of looked at like your max D gains and these are your min D gains. So it's a dynamic situation. Uh, and then yaw, it's in zero in both cases, so there's no D on yaw for, by default. If you don't like that, you can just set these to zero down here, and that will turn off D min altogether, and then these will be your default D gains at 35 and 38, and then you can adjust those however you like. Or if you want to make the raising of the D gains more sensitive so that it enacts quicker during prop wash, uh, you would raise this up to 35 or 40. Again, if you go too high on the gain, you'll just be at the max Ds all the time. So it kind of negates uh, D-min. The point of D-min really is that uh, the D-term is the most sensitive to noise. Uh, most of the time when you have jittery flight or uh, mid-throttle oscillations, that's all from the D-term. It's, it's really a combination of not enough, you know, too much mechanical noise, not enough firmware filtering, and then your D term is too high. Those are the three things in combo that give you mid throttle oscillations. It's one of those three, or all three in combination. Honestly, the best fix is reduce your mechanical noise, hands down. But aside from that, you can apply more filtering, or and you know filtering has a downside. It adds latency to the to the gyro signal coming in, which is not great, and it can reduce flight performance. Or honestly, we don't need the D term high all the time. We only really need it to arrest sharp flips and help with prop wash. So why do we need it high? Again, uh, dynamic D-term, keep it low when we're looking for smooth flight and then raise it up when these two moves are detected. The advance uh, really basically is almost like a feed forward on that D-gain and raising, you know, when the PIDs are being raised or the D-term is being raised up. 
So you can increase the advance. Uh, again, I will link down to the Betaflight 4.0 tuning guide and go read all about that in great length and detail. Uh, you can see some help here as well on these things. Uh, the advance can go up, you know, up to 80 or 100 or more uh, if you'd like, and that would just uh, increase in time the onset. So the sensitivity of the D-term raising up is adjusted by this D-min gain, and then you can make that uh, raising up kind of advance in time by adjusting the advance. So in doing the edit on this video it goes a little bit long to try to pack in then the PID controller settings and describe all what those are doing and the slider scales and th things of that nature. So I'm going to cut it here. I will link to the next video in this one if it's already been released. If not, stay tuned and that will be coming up soon. So far we've reviewed all the settings that deal with your rates and adjustments to those and also your PID gains and then adjustments to those as well. And then in the next video we'll round up with going through the PID controller settings. Thanks again and I hope this helped.